My name is Gregory King. I'm the managing director of TSK Energy Solutions, LLC. We are a black owned consultancy who works, involves the intersection of innovation, workforce development, and environmental justice. So I serve as a consultant to organizations who are looking to en enable a just transition of the energy system. So what gives me energy is, is the reality that the transition away from fossil fuels to clean energy is the economic development uh, opportunity of our century. This won't be an easy process. We've seen economic development waves after economic development waves. So we saw science boom. We saw a real estate boom here in, in Massachusetts. And we've seen other industries grow and prosper here and in the process leave entire communities behind. For us to be able to be successful in getting this particular unique opportunity, it's going to require a concerted, sustained effort. We can't allow setbacks to uh, keep us from pushing hard and for demanding seat at the table. And once we're at the table, we need to make certain that we are being a good citizen and engaging in ways that are respectful. But Forceful. I'm energized by the opportunity to take this need for us to transition systems and convert it into opportunities for black, brown and black people in particular who have historically been uh, shut out of economic development opportunities that are even happening in their own neighborhood. Really, I mean, important that as we think about uh, a just energy transition, what that actually means is that communities that have historically not had a voice need to be able to have a say in their own clean energy future. So this is not um, a, a situation which would lend itself to organizations or, or communities being dictated to as to what they should or should not be doing. It's really important that we create tools and educational resources and engage community members where they live so they can make informed choices about what investments should be made in their community to address the needs of themselves, their families, and potentially the opportunity for jobs working in clean energy. The biggest single takeaway is that this is hard work, that it's very difficult to reverse the status quo. So while there's a lot of people, organizations, the governments all sort of espousing a just energy transition, when you try to dig down deep into their actions and policies, there are still a lot of barriers that have been created systematically to actually disenfranchise and prevent underserved communities. The reason we have underserved communities is that our government systems have failed those communities. The biggest single takeaway is that this is hard work, that it's very difficult to reverse the status quo, while there's a lot of people, organizations, the governments all sort of espousing a just energy transition, when you try to dig down deep into their actions and policies, there are still a lot of barriers that have been created systematically to actually disenfranchise and prevent underserved communities. The reason we have underserved communities is that our government systems have failed those communities historically. And so we really need to have a recognition that this is a marathon, not a sprint. There's a lot of change that needs to be enabled. It involves the reality that people need to listen and not always talk. And we need policies and, and programs that really sort of look to reverse historical harms and not just try to put a Band-Aid on it. We need, you know, deep systematic changes that are necessary because we've had many decades of historical disenfranchise. You know, my father used to say, if you're behind in a race, run faster. So we have to run faster in order to catch up uh, when it comes to getting the benefits of clean energy, clean drinking water, clean air to breathe. It's something some people take for granted and others have just um, never been able 
to actually experience what that actually means. So, I mean, my, my lived experience has always been one of a disruptor. I've been a vocal advocate for clean energy. I've tried to uh, create a platform here in Massachusetts to advocate for those who don't have a platform to advance clean energy, someone who's knowledgeable about buildings and about renewable energy and about uh, vehicle electrification. I've tried to take my technical expertise and translate it into tools and, and processes that help people better understand the complexities and trade-offs involved in decisions around climate action and I'm leveraging my experience as an entrepreneur, as someone who has um, had a chance to at least be at the table to make certain that this energy system transition that we're on the verge of is done in a way that includes all of us. I think when you talk about climate, you have to talk about scale. In order for us to meet the challenges of climate change, we really have to recognize that it, it, no, nothing on, on the climate basis can be done without recognition that scale is sort of a, a part of the uh, e equation. We, the United States can't do it alone. We have our climate crisis, which is necessitating a need for us to change the way we drive cars, heat and cool buildings, or generate power. It's a global problem um, that's going to require a global response. Certainly commend Energy Allies on its work to create a community advisory board to lean into a community-centric development process around community solar to recognize that solar development or community solar development in underserved communities represents opportunities for jobs, for lowering of energy burden, and for potentially achievement of passive income through ownership. And so the Community Advisory Board has been a very important vehicle to expose people to solar development, to educate them about solar development on, on a lot of different levels, and in, in, in essence, to really help communities get behind solar projects in, in their uh, neighborhood. And so just being able to have regular convenings of different perspectives and to be able to help steer and coordinate the, that activity into the right direction has been, you know, re really helpful. Um, you know, we needed it here in Boston. And so I think Energy Allies has played a very important role towards the goal of trying to stand up community-owned uh, community solar that has more than just environmental. It has economic benefits for participants. And it's also been a great forum for, I think, members to learn from each other. The, the motivation for me is challenge around trying to get uh, more community engagement and involvement in uh, advocating for energy in infrastructure investments to uh, make certain that we're not leaving entire communities behind, that we're using the opportunity to create, create revenue and income for either businesses or individuals. And that, you know, we're being intentional about the way we convene meetings, the way we interact with each other is inclusive and respectful of everyone's right for an opinion. And so I think there is an awful lot to be said about Energy Allies' work in this particular space, which is so, so important if we are to really achieve you know, equality when it comes to access to uh, clean energy and to climate action.